Hello and welcome to our introduction to Seismic NetPay. In this video we will briefly show you how to use our Patrel plugin to generate a NetPay map derived from a seismic coloured cube. ArcCLS Seismic NetPay plugin is the original NetPay method developed by Connolly and effectively estimates NetPay from seismic attributes for a wide range of reservoir thicknesses including thin bed reservoirs. Dependent on the input data and the calibration, it is possible to use SNP to estimate net rock volume as well. In Petrel 2015, the application is located under the Geology and Geophysics perspective in the Seismic Interpretation tab. This opens the Seismic NetPay process window in which the application requests a seismic cube and to define the reservoir extent along the seismic survey for the analysis. We start by selecting a coloured inverted seismic cube. Then we define the reservoir. So we select top horizon, in time and in depth. And we do the same for the reservoir's base. With this information, SNP computes three horizon attributes between top and base horizons average amplitude from the coloured cube, time and depth separation at the reservoir level. SNP will automatically store and give proper names to each of the attributes after pressing the Calculate All button. If desired, the user can store the output attributes manually by inserting interpretation attributes in any of the horizons and select them by using the blue arrow. Once the horizon attributes are calculated, we can then go to the SNP main chart window by pressing on the Seismic Net Pay Analysis button. On this window, all the input and output data relevant for the analysis will be displayed. To start the analysis, Let's click on the NTG button on the toolbar. This launches the processing controller window on which all previously computed attributes are automatically picked. We can subset the inline and crossline range to refine the area of interest. Then we load the average amplitude and time thickness maps from which an average amplitude versus time thickness crossplot is generated on the main chart window and then proceed to the next tab. In the wavelet tab we need to design a filter which is going to be used to build a wedge model for the detuning data's response on the crossplot. The first step is to select the coloured inverted cube to load some traces. It's ideal to use a time gate of at least 500 milliseconds to have a representative sampling from the reservoir. In our case we'll use 800 milliseconds. These traces are then taken into the frequency domain in which we design our filter by selecting frequencies F1 to F4. It's recommended to use absolute for F1, dBs set to F2 and F3, and again absolute set to F4. We then compute the filter response and press on scale to plot the scaled theoretical tuning curve on the average amplitude versus time thickness crossplot. Computing the filter response generates a wedge model and a correction curve to detune the data. The application automatically selects a maximum average amplitude to fit on the average amplitude versus time thickness crossplot. Update the map button registers the DT range and updates the time thickness map to exclude out of range data points. The next step is to move on to the velocity tab. Here we provide the velocity ratio between pay and non-pay that is used to convert from net to gross in time to net to gross in depth. Then we can compute an initial SNP map. In the well data tab it's possible to calibrate the current seismic net pay map data to actual well data. To do this we need to provide some information like well name and position the total verticalized net pay value within the reservoir interval between the seismic picks and the petrophysical net pay. With this information we generate a cross plot between the seismic net pay from our map and the one from the well log data. 
And as you can see, there's a mismatch, and this is due to an overestimated maximum average amplitude on the average amplitude versus time thickness chart on the left. By setting a more representative value of maximum amplitude and pressing on recalculate, the software automatically recalibrates the filter design and recalculates all the previous steps. Now you can see on the cross plot that there's a much better match between seismic net pay and well net pay. SNP includes options to perform an uncertainty analysis, but for the moment we're going to go directly to write the output data. In this case, we're going to save the output from SNP analysis as an attribute in the horizon interpreted as the top of the reservoir. As in other ArcCLS tools, SNP allows the user to save all parameters in a session file in case the user wants to come back and make any amendments to the project. Now in a Petrel 3D window, we can display our seismic net pay attribute on the top horizon. We just need to select display attribute, then horizon attribute, and finally net pay. And let's change the color palette for a better display. And there it is, your seismic net pay map calibrated to your well data. Thank you for watching. And if you'd like information on any more of our services or products, please email us or check out our website.